So welcome everybody. Glad to have you here on Eclipse Day. Tonight we have live from Sarasota, Florida, uh, Kevin Hughes, also known as the postcard guy. Kevin's been collecting postcards since he was a kid. And um, he's also a dealer, sells, sells on uh, eBay. And he has uh, a lot of uh, real photo postcards and other, other postcards as well. But tonight he's going to talk about uh, real photo postcards from upstate New York. So once again, I, I'm Kevin Hughes. I'm down here in Sarasota, Florida. So once again, I've been collecting postcards a long, long time for what I consider to be a long time. Um, I started when I was about 10 years old. Uh, my mom was very much into antiques, loved going to garage sales, loved going to flea markets. And postcards were a very reasonable collectible back then in the 70s and 80s for me to collect. So back then, I mean, if anybody remembers postcards, you find boxes for five cents, 10 cent boxes all the time. And I really gravitated towards buying cards from my area, which at the time was the New Jersey shore. Um, I lived in Brick, New Jersey. Um, growing up, I did postcard shows in South Jersey, in the Philly area, in North Jersey. And I also became a dealer at some of the New York City shows as well. Um, lived there all my life up until about two years ago and then moved to Sarasota, Florida. Wouldn't you know it, as soon as I moved down here, I was contacted by a nice gentleman in upstate New York who decided to uh, liquidate his collection after 40 years of collecting New York State postcards. Um, mostly real photo postcards on top of it. Um, he collected for many, many years. He bought what he thought was the very best of the best. Um, I think his collection is amazing. And the neat thing about this collection is I haven't seen them all. And why haven't I seen them all? It's because I get one box a month. If you've heard of the Fruit of the Month Club, I'm in the Real Photo Postcard box of the Month Club. Every month he mails me a box of postcards. I unbox it online, on YouTube, live. And then I mail them a check for the postcards. The next month, the box comes in the mail. I unbox them. I mail them a check. I've been doing this for over two years now, and I have no idea where the bottom of this collection even is. So let's take a look at some of these postcards. I always like to share these because, again, I'm an eBay seller. I've been selling on eBay since the 90s, actually 1996, I believe, the year after eBay started. Once you sell these postcards, they're gone. You'll never see them again. You may never see them all together in this collection. So I like to document them through my YouTube videos. And I'll go over at the end on how you can see my previous videos and see more of this great collection. So let's go through these one by one. I will move through them pretty quickly. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. I don't consider myself to be a real photo expert. I am a real photo collector but I learn things new each and every week through buying more cards, more real photo postcards. Um, so let's go through some of these here. This first one is a real photo postcard of the state of New York historical map. It's really kind of neat. And I thought this was a great first slide showing Long Island and New York state, Lake Ontario at the top. Um, it is a really cool real photo postcard. And on the back, it is not postly used. But it just goes to show the type of things that you can find on real photo postcards. You got to remember, real photo postcards really came about around 1905. Uh, the first postcards came out around 1860s. So real photo postcards are kind of fairly new as far as the history of postcards go. The very first real photo postcard we can document is probably around 1888. But it really is not a true card because it wasn't produced on postcard paper. It was more so a photograph attached to a piece of cardstock and mail. So the majority of the real photo postcards that we collect today are right around 1905. So most of these are going to fall within that range. This one here is a really cool card here. It's a trolley in upstate New York. Uh, on the front, it has a nice sign that says, uh, this is the pay enter car. It has all the conductors out front, has a man standing at the controls. And this card is actually from Syracuse, New York. As you'll see on the back in a second, this is dated 1912. And what I like about the writing on the back, it says, can you find Papa in this picture? So this was meant to be a photographer came down, took a picture of all the workers with the trolley car. 
they made up maybe 10, 20, 30 cards. Everybody bought a couple and then you sent them to your friends and family. What's nice about these real photos, it could be as few as a handful and as many as maybe a couple hundred. These were not necessarily mass produced. They weren't printed on a printing press. They weren't made in the millions like some of the printed and lithographed postcards that you'll see. So some of these could be one of a kind. This could very well be one of a handful known to exist or maybe the only one that can exist. But let's take a look at the back. The back you can see, it says, uh, can you find Papa? I will send you a lot, uh, a lot of pretty postcards. Be a good girl, which is really, really cute on the back. And it is postmarked at the top, Syracuse, 1912. So again, documenting history on these real photos was very important. You'll see a lot of one-time type views. You'll see disasters. You'll see fires. You'll see special events. You'll see babies born. Uh, all types of, of news events back in the day. Don't forget there wasn't television. There wasn't necessarily radio around at the time. This was the way that they spread their news throughout town. So let's take a look at the next one here. Here's the ruins of the Utica Fire Academy, April 27th, 1908. Um, kind of confusing to me because it's the ruins of the Fire Academy. So the Fire Academy catch fire, uh, which is kind of ironic. Um, Manning, the photographer there was from- I think that's Utica. Free Academy. Oh, Free Academy. Yeah, you're right. I, I went reading Fire. Ruins of the Utica Free Academy. Thank you for that. Um, Manning was a large photographer in upstate Utica. If you want to say he was one of the largest printers of postcards, along with a couple other publishers, we'll see as we go through. But here's one where they documented the fire afterwards. This is something that the photographer ran down, took some photographs, ran back, printed them onto postcard paper, went back into town and either sold them to pharmacies or people around town to send out to their friends and family. On the back one, this one here, it is not postally used, but I like, especially like the little stamp box up in the top with the little sailboat, place your stamp here. Um, just another thing to note too, 1907 was a huge year for postcards. If, if you haven't noticed or haven't heard that before, up until 1907, you had to write on the front of the postcards, which is why you see so many real photo postcards with writing all over the front of the postcard. Once 1907 rolled around, there was a left side for the writing and the right side for the address only. So you'll see some cards in this group. Again, if we go back through some of the other ones, there was no writing here on this one because it had a divided back. But once we find a few divided back postcards, you'll see the writing is all on the front of the card, which is really interesting. Over here, here's the Ebenezer State Bank. I think that's a great name for a bank. Uh, it is in the town of Ebenezer, New York. If anybody knows where that is, I have no idea where that is. But just a nice small town scene. You got some railroad or trolley tracks in view there. You got a barn maybe to the right for horses and wagons, but just a really quaint little view of the Ebenezer State Bank. And again, nobody in view. A lot of times there would be people in view in these cards. Uh, and then sometimes not, just the photographer standing there with his tripod taking pictures of the bank. On the back of this one, it is one of the larger companies again. This is the Eastern Illustrating Company out of Belfast, Maine. They did a lot of real photo postcard publishing for Maine, uh, New Hampshire, and upstate New York. So you will see this back on the back of a lot of New York State postcards, right? especially like that bank. Over here is a view of a military camp. This is the US Artillery in Camp at Saratoga, New York. This is September 1906. So this is just before World War, World War, yeah, World War I. But what I like is you can see the cavalry horses. You can see men in view carrying things. You can see the very simple tents in view. Again, these would have been sold to soldiers to send home to say, yes, I'm in boot camp. Here I am at Saratoga. This is what my camp looks like. And this is uh, just one way to really document uh, history back in back in time. What I especially like is about real photos is this is exactly what the photographer saw through the lens. There is no artist touching up. There are no penciling in of airplanes up in the air. There are no erasing of telegraph poles in view. These are actually what was seen 
on that day, on that time. Uh, and it's kind of really unique. I mean, photographs really document the exact image that they saw back then. On the back, this one is not postly used, but as you can see, this is an undivided back, which means anything they wanted to write, they would have had to write either on the image or in this little border on the front of the card. A lot of the cards in his collection are documented with writing. A lot of them are not postmarked. He really didn't seem to uh, care whether they were or they weren't. I know some collectors don't want postmarks on cards. Others love to see the postmark to give an approximate year. Moving on here, here's a larger town in upstate New York. And I'm going to say it wrong. Is it Oneonta? Does that sound right? Yes, that's right. Central Hotel, Oneonta, New York. A lot of the upstate New York towns for me are a challenge for a Jersey guy like myself. Uh, but what I love in this view is the Central Hotel. You got horses and wagons. You got trolley tracks in the middle of the street. Uh, to the left of those the buildings there is the bank. Um, what I especially love is you can really dive into a real photo with a loop or with a magnifying glass and read all the signage, read all the posters. It's really a neat thing that you can do with these. The details on these real photos are amazing. Um, if anybody doesn't know how to tell a true real photo, best way to do it is get your loop or your magnifying glass, go real close to the image. And if you see a little series of dots, that is most likely not a real photo postcard. The little dots come from the lithograph process, which comes from a printing press, whereas real photo postcards were taken with a camera, developed onto a negative in a dark room, and then printed onto the postcard stock. So if you look at a true real photo with a magnifying glass or a loop, you should not see any little tiny little dots in the image at all. Um, once you get uh, going collecting real photo postcards, it's almost very easy to identify a real photo from a printed card. Every now and then they'll they'll surprise me with one I think is a real photo and it's not. But this is a real nice quaint little scene, horses and wagons in view. No automobiles in view at all on this one. So it is an earlier card. There's the back there and not postally used. Up in the corner, you can see the AZO place stamp box here. That, that helps us date the cards. There are several great online references this is ACO and we call it four triangles up. You'll see a triangle in the left corner, the right corner, and the bottom two corners. That helps us date exactly when this postcard is from. So if you ever need a reference, let me know and I can email it to you. It's very widely available online for real photo um, postcards. Moving along, again, we said disasters were a big deal. Here is the O and W rec at Parker, New York. Again, I'm not an expert on where that is in New York State, uh, but apparently terrible train wreck. One locomotive has run into the back of the other. It's nicely documented June 20th, 1910. You got some men standing there proudly. I don't know if they're happy about the wreck or just glad to be in the photograph, uh, but that's a real nice, uh, real photo train wreck view. On the back, again, postly unused. So not every card was postmarked. This card was never sent. It was probably kept in somebody's album and uh, been packed away for many, many years. Over here, we'll move on to an interior of a barroom scene. Again, somebody mentioned earlier in the pre-chat that a lot of cards weren't marked. And that's a shame because this is a beautiful barroom scene. We'd love to know where this was from or, or who took it. This one here, you got the barroom, you got the beer signs, you got the men standing behind the bar. This card was documented in his collection on the back. And again, I, I don't know how easy it is to, to document this, but it says Jamestown, New York, 2nd Street by the Erie Depot. So again, you I mean, he must have did some research on this card because that, that wouldn't have been my guess. Who knows where this card was from? But for some reason, it was documented on the back either by a previous collector or by the person that I bought his collection from. So I'll do a little bit more research on this card and find out if that really is Jamestown, New York. I'd love to find that bar and be able to positively document that scene. Because again, not postmarked on the back, not sent. So there's no clues on the back, unless you can read the signs. Sometimes you can read posters in view, flyers, signs, even calendars on the wall are a good, good clue. Over here, we got another nice Main Street scene. This is St. Regis Falls, New York, another smaller town. 
what I especially like in this one is this is that time period where the dirt roads were shared by both the horses and wagons and the very first automobiles. So it's that kind of unique period in time before the cars didn't chase all the horses off the roads. Um, you got a couple people in view walking up the sidewalk. You got some signage. You got striped awnings on the buildings. Just a neat early card. On the back, it is nicely documented. It says, this is a very old picture, isn't it? These cars are very high, are they not? I don't know what that means by what they mean by high. I guess standing up high, I guess. I'm not sure, but that's their commentary. And it's being sent from Regis Falls to St. Regis Falls. So again, nice small town view. Once the cars began coming along, you needed gas stations. So here's a very early service station in a town called Bliss, New York. Um, I love the cars in view, uh, the early gas pumps with the dome glass tops. You got Kendall Motor Oil signs. You got the Ford sign over the doorway. And it looks like a pit there in the foreground where you could pull the cars in and work underneath them. So just a nice small town uh, gas station view. And on the back, this one's stamped and postmarked all over the place. Um, on the back, hello, a beautiful day. Uh, goes on and on and on. Best wishes all. And it is nicely postmarked on the back. So this one's very well documented. Train stations, another huge topic in real photo postcards. This one is in New York Central Railroad Station uh, in Brewerton, New York. You got the platform there with people on it, people standing on the tracks waiting for the train. You got the early luggage carts, a uh, lot going on. And again, when it comes to collecting these and the value of these, I find the smaller the town, the smaller the train station, the more valuable the card generally is. Um, I've had New York City real photo postcards sell in the $30, $40, $50 range. I've had real photo cards like this one here from a small upstate New York town sell in the $100 to $200 range just because it's a smaller town and I think there were very few cards ever made. So just a real, photo, real uh, nice real photo postcard here, sharp, very well taken. And on the back again, postmarked, you can see 1912 on the back and sent to Potsdam, New York. I try to pull a little bit of everything for this. Special events, this is a dedication day of a Masonic temple in Sherburne, New York. It's dated 1922. You got people on horseback, you got people in parade formation. You got businesses off to the left. You got some early cars. Uh, it looks like this building at the top was dedicated, it looks like it says 1921. And then I guess they dedicated 1922. But a nice uh, event type real photo postcard there. And it is postmarked on the back. Somebody has nicely documented fire hall left center. So I guess the fire hall was 1921 and maybe the Masonic temple was 1922. But just a neat card there. Over to some aviation, I mean, the very earliest aviation cards show Lindbergh era style airplanes. New York State was very well known for their aviation and early aviation stuff. This one here is a Curtis aviation, air, a Curtis airplane, and it says at the bottom, USA Scout. This one is documented on the back as being from Hammersport, New York, which was very well known for early, early airplanes. Uh, aviation events, flying, uh, Lindbergh, Lindbergh was there. There was a lot of different aviators that were at Hammondsport. So you'll see a lot of early New York State cards with airplanes on it from that town in, in New York, Hammondsport, New York. So I love the early aviation cards as well. Over here is a neat little train. Uh, it's a sightseeing train with open side cars. This is called the Cary Railroad between Marion and Utawana River in the Adirondacks. Uh, the Adirondacks were a very popular vacation scene in upstate New York. So there were a lot of real photo postcards taken of, of the Adirondacks. You'll see a lot of lodges, a lot of cabins, a lot of hunting real photo postcards. I especially like this one here because it shows a sightseeing train going through the Adirondacks, which is really, really cool. It looks like the photographer on the left side was E.E. E. Kellogg. 
Usually the photographers would mark most of their cards. They were very proud of their images and they wanted to copyright their cards so nobody else could steal their images. On the back of this one, you can see no bears in sight. They had written on the, on the thing. Um, this one was made on the side. You can see E.E. E. Kellogg, Kellogg, photographer, Port Laden, New York. And it looks like it's postmarked. I believe that reads, is it Bear Martin, Bear Mountain? Something like that. And it's being mailed to Syracuse. We'll move on to the next card. I believe it's Blue Mountain Lake. Blue Mountain. Very good. Yeah, some of the postmarks are very difficult to read. So unless you really know that area, but you're probably right. Blue Mountain Lake. Yep, T-A, and then the I is missing. And then probably L-A-K-E, which I believe is in the Adirondack areas, correct? Yes. All right, over here, we have a beautiful furniture stove and tinware building. You have probably the owners of the building standing out front. You got a grinding stone there out front. You got a horse and wagon with all kinds of stuff piled up in it, uh, especially I like this card here. And on the back, without knowing it on the front, you wouldn't know where it was from. But on the back, the photographer is, looks like CM Schooley, Candor, New York. So another small town view there. This card, I get a kick out of it, was sold for 25 cents. That is the price down in the corner there. So that was picked up at a show many, many years ago by this collector for just 25 cents. But just a nice, what I call an occupational view, you know, a store dealer or a store owner, horse and wagon, grinding. I mean, they did all kinds of furniture, stoves, ranges, all kinds of signage in the windows. Moving on to some more av aviation. Like I said, these are early, early airplanes. I mean, if you look closely, it looks like a steering wheel with a fan belt around it to control the airplane. Uh, it's a biplane, it's got two wings. And on the back, this is the New York State Fair of 1908. So again, upstate New York was very, very popular with early flyers, early aviators. And you'll see a lot of the real photo postcards are from, from the areas in upstate New York. Over here is another disaster. This is, I'm hoping I'm saying it right, Krogan, New York, swept by fire in 1912, two lives lost, 40 buildings, B-I-L-D-I-N-S, burnt, and a loss of a half a million dollars. Now this is a half a million dollars in 1912, so you can only imagine how much it is today. So this was a huge, huge loss for this town. Uh, a lot of times you'll see on these real photos also, you'll see a lot of misspellings. Uh, I get a kick out of that. You'll see letters written backwards. You'll see misspellings. I love the way they spell buildings on this one. This one is a Mandeville photo. So again, he would have been the publisher or the photographer. And on, on the back, this is where, this is how Krogan looked after the fire. What do you think about it? So I especially like them. I like them when they're documented on the back and postmarked myself lends a little bit more to the history behind the cards. Over here is a town called Romulus, New York. This is a horse-drawn fire wagon. You got the firemen in their white uniforms there, their parade uniforms, beautiful horse-drawn wagon there. Really just a nice scene and documented nicely on the front. Again, this is an undivided back, so any writing they would have done had to be on the front of the card. And there's the undivided back. Up in the corner is what they call a psycho stamp box, C-Y-K-O. That again, helps us document the cards. And you can go to that tool that I was showing, uh, telling you about, and it'll tell you approximately when this card was published. If you haven't seen your own hometown yet, hopefully it's coming up. I've tried to pick a little bit of everything. This is a view of South Buffalo Street in a town called Orchard Park, New York. I especially like the cars and delivery trucks in view. The stores in view. Love that traffic light hanging in the middle of the street. It goes across on a cable and probably swings in the wind like crazy. But it is a neat view. I love the kids standing on the street corner at the left. In this one here, when a photographer came to town, everybody loved to get in the picture. A lot of people couldn't afford their own photographs. So this was the best way to get yourself in a picture was to run down a quick jump in the shop before they took it. This card here was not postmarked on the back. It is a divided back, even though it doesn't have the line down the back, it does say correspondence on one side and address on the other. 
This one here is one of my favorites out of the group. It says the jungles of Oxford, and this is Oxford, New York. Not sure exactly where that is. Maybe somebody can tell me, but apparently the circus has come to town. You have two really cute elephants there uh, drinking water out of the horse trough in the middle of town. And on the back, there you go, Oxford, New York, and it looks like maybe 1903 or 1908. Uh, it says, shot, snapshot of me while watering my stuff. So apparently this was a big deal and it is kind of cute. I love those elephants in the middle of town. Circuses coming to town back then were a big deal. So you will see circus parades, you'll see clowns, you'll see elephants and things like that as well. Over here, another small town train station. This is Shawmont, New York. Uh, you can see in the background, there's a train in view. People on the platform, uh, not a lot to see other than the station itself. On the back, it is postmarked, it looks like 1911, and it's going to Perch River, Jefferson County, New York. Uh, probably a small town as well, Perch River. Can't, can't imagine that's too that's big up in place. the That's up in the Adirondacks. Okay, there you go. Oh, and there are two Oxford, New York, so. Oh, good luck with finding that one, right? Yeah. That one was being mailed to Cincinnati, I believe it's called. All right, over here, this one I like. This is a Captain Daniel E. Fox of Troop C Department State Police at Sydney, New York. So apparently horse, uh, horseback police officers. He was Troop C Department of New York State Police. Neat looking card there with him on the top of his horse. On the back, it wasn't sent, but I like the back especially. Very proud of their Phelps photo, Sydney, New York at the top left. And that's what they call a defender stamp box, uh, stamp box at the right. Again, which helps us date these cards. So you see police departments, things like that. Here's a depot at Evans Mills, New York. You got some cars at the left, people on the uh, train, platform. I love the little signs that identify. You can read the sign there that says Evans. Um, a neat small town view there. And on the back, it's postmarked Evans Mills, New York, 1909. Um, and then I think it says, yeah, it says Evan Mills at the top, dear sister, Mary. And it goes on and on telling them what's going on in Evans Mills. Um, over to the next card here. This is a favorite of mine. This is Huckleberry Charlie at Pine Camp, New York. Pine Camp was a military camp. And Huckleberry uh, Charlie, from what I understand, was a veteran. I don't know if he was goes back to the Civil War or, or thereafter, but he was a veteran that worked at the camp. He would go round up newspapers. He would get postcards printed. He would bring them to the soldiers and sell them. He was a very enterprising uh, older gentleman there that would work the camp and sell them all kinds of goods and products that they couldn't get while on base at camp. So that, that was Huckleberry Charlie, interesting person. This one here on the back is another one of the, what I say is a large publisher, Beach Series. Beach was made out of Remsen, New York. Um, what I liked about his is he marked them all just like this Beach Series postcard, genuine hand-finished photograph, uh, made at Remsen, New York. So you have no doubt whose cards these are and where they came from. So Beach, you'll see a lot of upstate New York cards he was the publisher for. We have a lot of milk cards and dairies in upstate New York. So this is the Borden's Condensed Milk Company out of Whitehall, New York. And the photographer there looks like it's Alco, A-L-L-C-O-H. But probably in this collection, like I said, uh, so far, I think I've bought maybe 5,000, 6,000 New York State real photo postcards. I would say out of that, I must have 200 dairies. So apparently dairies in New York State, taking real photo postcards of them was, was a big deal. So I have a lot of dairy companies in upstate New York. The back is unsent, so not a lot of clues on the back. Over here, you have a very early uh, delivery truck. This says Fort Stanwick Canning Company. What I like about this is it's a cab over engine. The engine is under a seat, basically. You got brass era lamps on the front of the vehicle. And I love that chain drive. The wheels are driven by like a bicycle, heavy duty bicycle chain, which goes around and goes around the back wheels. And note that the wheels are wood spoke, just like wagon wheels. 
Uh, Fort Stanwyck Canning Company was out of Rome, New York. So that's how I can identify this one as Rome, New York. So neat delivery truck for a small town, New York uh, company. Over here, trolleys and trains, again, very popular. This is the post office at Middle Falls, New York. Love that trolley in view. You can see the post office in the back. Everybody's run out to get their pictures taken in view. And look at the contrast in the image. I mean, very sharp, very detailed, uh, a nice composition. And that's what people look like, look uh, for when they collect these. You'll see real photos that are very faint. You'll see some that are dark. You could find 10 of the same image with a varying degree of contrast. So not every real photo postcard came out exactly the same. They were developed in a dark room and sometimes they came out too light and sometimes too dark. But if they're just right, that's when uh, they're a very special card. This one back on the back has nice documentation on the back, October, 1911. Another publisher on the left, Herbert A. Meyer and Company out of Jordan, New York. And this card looks like it was sent to Saras, Saratoga, I believe. This is a federal flour mill and Kiefer knitting factory out of a town called Camillus, New York. Um, I see a lot of paper companies out of upstate New York and a lot of mills as well. Uh, beautiful old building, knitting mills, probably turned out tons and tons of the product over the years. You'll usually see them along a waterway. I think they moved a lot of their product up and down, either on canals or on rivers along the waterways. On the back, it is postmark Camillus, New York, 1910. There's another station here, Lake Bonaparte. I'm not real familiar with where that is, but at the station, Lake Bonaparte, it is a very small station, probably just to stop along a train line. Uh, you can see it's not even a closed station building. It's just an open air type building. But I love the little girl in view and the people waiting to get on the train. This one again is a beach series postcard, genuine hand finished photograph on the back. And it looks like it's going to, I believe that should be Gloversville or maybe it is Gloversville. Not Gloversville. Quite sure. Gloversville. Gloversville, right? I think they're missing the R. What's interesting is back then you didn't need an address. So this was sent to Mrs. George, is it Tanner in Gloversville, New York? And that's all you really needed to know that the mailman would find your place and make sure you got it. So. It even was an RFD route number two, which is interesting as well. Um, I really don't get into researching the postmarks. I know a lot of people get into discontinued post offices or DPOs. I do find a lot of these real photo postcards do have a lot of small towns that don't exist anymore. Over here, this is another one of my favorites in the group. This is a small town, uh, I guess could be a drugstore. Uh, it's a soda fountain, you can see that contraption in the middle there has all types of flavors of soda. You got an orange aid sign uh, to the side. If you look directly behind the soda fountain itself, on the wall there are tons of real photo postcards. Uh, you have some printed advertising. Uh, you got Welch's grape juice in view, all kinds of ice cream stuff in view. You got the wooden stools, but I especially like the postcards on the wall. One of the most popular categories in real photo postcards now, and postcards in general, is postcards on postcards. So people will look for pharmacies and drugstores and things like this that show postcards on the wall, and they are very desirable. As a matter of fact, if you look on the shelf in the back, the whole shelf across the back is all lined with postcards as well. So whether they sold them there or these are just on display, I'm not quite sure, but I love seeing those postcards. Uh, along the back wall there. This card here is not postmarked, but it was made by the Lion View Company of Parish, New York. So I would venture to say it's somewhere in the area of Parish. Moving along, we have a fireman's parade. These are the hose boys, which I love that term. Uh, July 4th, 1908, usually every 4th of July, the firemen would come out in full force in their dress uniforms with their white gloves and show off their fire apparatus. This is, Worc Wor how do you say it, Worcester, New York, Worcester, New York, and it's got the wagons in view, it's got a parade float in the back, and uh, the men in view. 
This one is not postmarked on the back, but is very well documented on the front as an upstate New York town. This is an area of very small train line here. This is the Lowville and Beaver River Railroad. Again, I'm not super familiar, but I know there probably wasn't a lot in the area at the time. That's up, that's up in the North Country, just to North the west country. of the Adirondacks. There you go. You mean it looks like a, well, it doesn't look like a sightseeing train, but you mean there's very few cars. It looks like one, two, three, four cars, a tender and a, and a locomotive. So you can't get much smaller than that, but that's a nice small town view there. And it is postmarked Lowville on the back and going to Carthage, New York. Speaking of the Adirondacks, here's a logging scene. Uh, Adirondacks were big for logging back then. The Adirondack pine, a big load, looks like it says 5,781 feet. And you got the men sitting on top of the logs. You've got the poor horses pulling all that weight on those logs, but you will see a lot of logging photographs in upstate New York. Over here, it's postmarked on the back. It's got a lot of writing. What I like is somebody documented probably many years later in ink pen, uh, left to write who the people are. And it says, Papa says around 1908. So I love that when they document that on the views. In my opinion, it doesn't take away from the view at all because the front is untouched and the back has some nice documentation. Over here is a bunch of ladies, and they're in front of the WCTU tent, which I believe stands for Women's Christian Temperance Union. Uh, so this was a big thing. You'll see suffra suffrage cards for the women's right to vote, and you'll see Christian Temperance Union. You'll see a lot of prohibition-type real photo postcards. As a matter of fact, I just listed one this week of uh, upstate New York, we got a sheriff taking a, an ax to a bunch of liquor kegs on the back of a wagon. So you'll see a lot around prohibition, oh. Christian temperance union and suffrage as well. This card here says Cuba, New York on the back, which again, that's all I have to go by until I can find another card like it to, to document that. That's, that's, by Cuba, that's, New York. That is due south of Rochester down near the Pennsylvania border. Oh, there you go. You mean there are, is some signage and posters in the back. I would have to crawl in there and see with a loop and see if I could document that. But Cuba, New York came from somewhere, someone before me. So I would have never picked Cuba, New York. Over here, another disaster. This is New York City wreck at Little Falls, New York. This one is a really bad one. This was back in 1907. You, what's neat is you have a steam uh, crane in view lifting the damaged train off the tracks. Wreckage everywhere. You can see the New York Central on the card to the right. Uh, this is a Manning photograph out of Utica, New York. Again, one of the larger photographers. It is not postmarked or stamped on the back. One of the next ones and one of my favorites, again, fishing. Hunting and fishing was huge in upstate New York. I'm sure all you guys know that. This is the fishing party at, and I'm going to butcher this, Chenevis Creek. Um, they claim 1,250 pounds or 1,250 fish were caught with a weight of one ton, which is pretty amazing. Um, this is ice fishing. So I have other views from the same fishing party where they're drilling the holes in the ice and they're fishing. But in this uh, view here, they claim this is 1,250 fish they caught at this outing, which is really a neat event. I love that the man to the right is holding an ax to chop away the ice. You got a person holding a, uh, a burlap sack, you got people holding fish in their hands, and of course you got all the fish on the ice. On the back, it's nicely postmarked, 1912, so no doubt on the back. But I love the way they had a special event documented like that for all their friends and family to see. We venture over here to Copenhagen, New York, the creamery. So again, a dairy or a creamery. Um, there's a platform there with milk cans on it. You can see the wagon tracks leading up to it where they would have loaded and unloaded the uh, probably the raw milk there. And if we go to the back, it was made by the Lion View Company at Pulaski, New York. Over here, we are privileged to see Herkimer's brand new fire truck, a big event in town. They love to show off their new fire apparatus. And here we are looking at the brand new fire truck. On the hood, it says Herkimer. 
You have probably the fire chief on the back. You have a lantern hanging on a hook. You've got the fire wheel hose. Uh, just a neat early, early fire vehicle there. And on the back, it is not postmarked. That is the price that he paid on the back. I usually leave that on there. So this gentleman over the past 40 years, at one time he paid $100 for that real photo. This one I think is really neat, only because of the name on the door, H.G. Wells. I did not know he was a jeweler. I venture to say this is another H.G. Wells and not the one we're thinking of. But I love this small town building. Look at that square little building, not much to it. But there he is standing out front. That's probably H.G. himself standing proudly in front of his jewelers. If you note the sign, it's turned sideways and hard to see, but the sign is in the shape of a pocket watch, which is really, really cool to me. So great occupational view there. On the back that says Utica, New York. So I guess he traced it, H.G. Wells, the jeweler to Utica, New York. Over here, another nice trolley view. This is the Glenwood trolley. You got a couple people in view, the conductor and some trainmen. Um, I love the little uh, um, cow catcher on the front. You mean those really did work? If people were on the tracks and in the middle of the way, it did its best to scoop you up and pick you up so you weren't run over. Um, it did work for dogs and other animals and I guess cows as well, but there are many stories in small town newspapers of that saving someone's life where it scooped them up and they fell onto the grate until the trainmen could stop the car. Over here on the back, this is Binghamton. Is it Binghamton? Yeah, Binghamton. Uh, yeah, Binghamton, New York, Broome County. And then it says reply or something to Goethe, which is kind of neat. But a nice small town trolley station. Here's a small station, Santa Clara Depot. Um, I guess it's in the area of like Remsen, New York, because that's where the photographer is from. On the back, you can again see Beach Series postcards made from any photo at Remsen, New York. Usually your photographers back then would not travel far. They usually stayed within a, a five to 10 mile radius. So they didn't usually venture much further out, out of that. Their idea was to run out, take the photograph, run back to the studio, publish it, print it, and then run back and then sell the card. So they didn't travel 30 minutes on a, a horse and wagon or on a car. They usually stayed within their local area. Here's a really sharp image of a Borden's condensed milk wagon. I love this one here. It says Office Green Street. So where is Green Street, you say? According to this, Albany, New York. That address comes up as Albany, New York. Uh, it looks like number nine Green Street. That was a Borden's milk uh, delivery place in Albany, New York. So I love the man in his uniform. I love the white horse and the advertising on the side of the wagon. You'll see sporting events. Uh, baseball is probably one of the most popular. This is the Young Men's Guild baseball team. I love the hyphen between base and ball in a town called Granville, New York. Uh, I love that they're holding the baseball bats. Sometimes you'll see mitts in view. But this is the very, very early days of baseball. Most of these real photos are around 1905 to 1910. So baseball was pretty early back then, and to have your photograph done and on a postcard was a huge deal. This one here was made by Rotograph out of New York City. Um, I'm not familiar with Granville. Does anybody know where Granville is? I'm not. I'd have to do some more research on that. I don't think it's in the New York City area. I think it's more in New York State. Uh, but the Rotograph company was a huge, huge publisher uh, up in New York City. What I like is it says it's published on bromine paper, and, and uh, this is a real photograph. They were very proud of the fact that these are actual photographs. Over here, this is a logging train in a town called Niskayuna, New York. Uh, this is the Walsh Call Lumber Company at a Niskayuna, New York. Again, nice early st steam train. You got the conductor, you probably got the owner of the train there. And on the back, it is not postmarked. So really, we are very happy that they stamped it at the top so we know exactly where this image is from. Over here, another milkman. This is Willie the Milkman. I love the way they nicknamed people back then. Like they called me Kevin the Postcard Guy. This was Willie the Milkman. 
Uh, it says Milk and Cream C.A. DeVille. I love the horse with the little tassels hanging down to keep the flies off his back. He's holding the milk uh, pail and also a, middle, a little pitcher of milk for like milk. This one is postmarked or not postmarked on the back, but it's written Sodus Point, New York around 1910. So again, we can trace that that uh, milk wagon, CA DeVille to Sodas Point, New York. Oh, Sodas Point's on Lake Ontario, and Granville okay. is located in the Adirondacks uh, near Glens Falls. Got it. I know this gentleman that collected loved his Adirondacks cards, so that does not surprise me that a lot of them are from up that area. Here's a small little rest stop. This is the Shady Nook Rest at Evans Mills, New York, second one from that town. I love the signage. Uh, you got ice cream signs, you got grapes signs, ice cold drinks, lunch. And of course you got a gas pump to the left. A lot of these small town roadside stores had their own gas pumps. There's a really cool mobile gas sign there and you got a nice early automobile on the left. This one did come from one of the larger publishers. Again, the Eastern Illustrating Company out of Belfast, Maine. Over here, we got a parade float. This is the Syracuse Plows and Edison Phonographs Parade Float. He advertises a little bit of everything. You mean Edison Phonographs, doors and windows, binders, twine, hay. Was that hay and rope, I guess? So he did a lot of everything, plows, everything else in between. This says Odessa, New York is where it's from at the bottom. And it looks like 1910. I love the fancy border on this one. You don't see those fancy borders often. Usually the image goes edge to edge. So to have a card made like this, it might have cost a couple extra cents. A um, majority of these real photos back then were between three cents and five cents to have them uh, have them made. Here we can see a desk in New York on the back. And mm -hmm. the price at the top, if you can squint a little bit, $12 for this card is what it sold for. Over here is one of the mills at a town called Beavers Falls, Beaver Falls, New York. A lot of, again, the mills had railroad tracks riding, running alongside. They have water for transporting uh, a lot of their products. But this is Beaver Falls, New York. And it is postmarked at the top as well. Moving along, here's another fire view at the Oneonta, New York. Again, loss of $100,000 back in 1908. That was a huge amount of money, I'm <clears throat> sure, back then. And not much left of the building. It's just basically ash at this point and a few things standing in the middle. On the back, it is postmarked. It looks like Della, I can't read that, Delaney, maybe Delaney or something, New York. Oh, yeah, Delancey, New York. It's going to Delancey, New York. And this was made by C.H. Phelps, Sydney, New York. Moving on to here, we saw some baseball. Here's some basketball. Uh, some kids in their basketball uniforms, 1907 to 1908. And H on the uniform stands for Homer, New York. This is the junior high school at Homer, New York. I have several cards nicely documented on the back from Homer. And this is just a really neat one of the kids in their uniforms. We have a member of our club who's a dealer. They call him Homer Bob because he's from Homer, New York. And there you go. Here's Homer, New York Junior High School. <laughs> Over here, this is a Delaware Lackawanna, I think, DL and W Rec, uh, Chadwick's New York, 1906. Uh, the photographer was out of Utica, New York. He got the train laying on its side, almost in the water, or actually in the water. You got the locomotive and cars on the other side. There's cars everywhere in this, this view here. It is postmarked 1906 on the front, Brooklyn, New York. And on the back, there you go. You got Brooklyn, 1906. And what's the other one? It looks like maybe Saugerties could be on the other postmarked. But again, because it's an undivided back, they had to put all their writing on the front. So they had no choice but to write anything they wanted on the front of the card because it was an undivided back. Saugerties is on the Hudson River uh, north of Poughkeepsie. Perfect. Very nice. Over here, got a small little grocery store, Shawmont, New York, Point. <laughs> uh, how do you say that? Sol, sol, I can't say that, that one. Sublubrious, Shawmont, ah. New York. So 
America. Some of those are tongue twisters. Rogers Store, Fine Groceries, and Shawmont, New York. Over back on the back, you can see it's postmarked July 17th, 1909, and it's heading out to Michigan. Over here, got Depot in Lowville, New York. It's a Mandeville photo. The more you have going on in a real photo scene, the better. So this one's got a lot going for it. You got people in view. You got the steam locomotive bill, billowing smoke on the right side. You got the horse-drawn taxi in the middle. You got the hotel hack on the left side that would pick people up at the station and bring them to the local hotels. So the more you have going on in a view, the better the real photo card usually is and the more money that it usually brings. On the back, it's an undivided back and it looks like it's going to Mechanicville, New York and postmark Lowville. Coming down to the last handful of cards, we have a nice view here of the Creamery at Spring Lake, New York. This was published for a gentleman named Jay Green. So again, you have to remember back then, they had did have very early brownie type cameras. You could take your own photographs, bring them to a photographer, have them published onto postcard stock and basically you know, sell them yourselves. So you can have them made for family members. You could commercially do them yourselves as well. So um, this might've been a private person that took the photograph, but it's published for Jay Green. Over on the back, it just says simply 1908. This was published by Herbert Meyer, Jordan, New York, along the side of the card. Over here is a really neat card of a ferry. This is a ferry boat going across a body of water. You could see the big poles for moving the ferry across. There would have been a cable that went from one side to the other. Uh, you could probably get a horse and wagon on there, or some horses, some people. This is the Dunn's Back Ferry, New York, I guess is the name of the town. So it's probably the Dunn's Back Ferry in Dunn's Back, New York as well. Um, you can see several buildings in view. The back has a lot of information on it. Um, somebody wrote, it's a discontinued post office, Emery, Emmerich, New York. So apparently that doesn't exist on a post office uh, postmark anymore. So I have it marked DPO Emmerich, New York. It's in Albany County, I guess. Um, the mail back then was Cohos, New York. And apparently that's the Cohos. Yeah. And that's the Mohawk River in view. So a lot going on in there. I just love that early ferry. It wasn't even motorized at that point. It was just pulled across on a cable from one side to the other. Sometimes they would have a horse or a donkey on one side and a horse and a donkey on the other side and pull it back and forth. Moving on to an yet another train wreck, the 20th Century Limited Wreck at St. Johnsville, New York. Again, you have a locomotive on its side, snow on the ground everywhere. Who knows what happened in that view? But it's enough information where if you wanted to learn more about it, there's plenty of information online on the internet that you can research these type of views. And that's usually where I go to the internet when I want to learn more about these cards. On the back, somebody wrote 1910, and it looks like Rita Lux, maybe Lux Lux was the sender. Over here, you have Main Street in Perry, New York, number three Main Street, beautiful storefronts. I love the sign on the side of the building, a good place to buy good shoes, coals. You got all kinds of striped awnings and buildings in view, horses and wagons, a man on a bicycle. You have a lot going on. And on the back of this one, simply Dana. That's all we get on the back of that one. Over here, this is when we moved from horse-drawn uh, hotel hacks or, or, or carriages to motorized vehicles. This is the Hotel, Hotel Utica Auto Bus at Utica, New York. I love the chauffeur guy at the back, the man in the window up front. It does say Hotel Utica on the side. It does still have the early lanterns, one lantern in the back, and you got the steps going up. But look at how plush inside. You can look on the back door and see the pleated uh, fabric. Very plush transportation back then to get you from the hotel to the Hotel Utica which apparently was probably pretty upscale to have a, a, a taxi or a bus like this. On the back, not postmarked at all. This is a town called Dickinson Center Station, New York. Small town train station, you got the view. Again, all the writing on the front, because I would venture to say this is an undivided back. Let's take a look. 
And it is, it's an undivided back. It says Northern New York, somebody wrote, Dickinson Center, New York, going to Parishville, New York. Yeah, Par Parish is north of Syracuse, between Syracuse and Lake Ontario. Okay. Very neat looking, I mean, no trains in view, but you can see where the track spurs off there and splits, a little siding. You can see the American Express Company sign on the side of the building. You got the train signals in view. Just a neat real photo scene. Over here, I like the way they kind of touted their business. Some of the 10,000 crates shipped in 1910. Scriba or Scriba, New York, I guess, is the name of that one. And they basically made wooden crates for shipping. That was their claim to fame. So there's all the workers there. It's probably a lumber mill in the back. You've got train tracks in the distance. And they manufactured wooden crates for all kinds of materials. And that one is not postmarked on the back. Where's Scriba or Scriba? They look kind of like apple crates. It's uh yeah, they could be. It's not that far from Watertown. Um, it's there there was a postcard show there for many years. Um oh, neat. that stopped a year or two ago. Very, very cool. Love the telegraph poles in the back. Um, if you go to my YouTube videos, you'll see some. I mean, I have 400 videos. Uh, about postcard collecting on YouTube. A lot of them are of these real photo postcards. Um, and one of the funny things is you'll see a lot of real photo telegraph pole photographs. People love to climb these telegraph poles, get their picture taken up on the pole. Sometimes they were telegraph pole installers. Sometimes they were just people around town that like to climb the poles and get their pictures taken. So you will see a lot of those views. Over here, you got a cash grocery in a town called Hannibal, New York, staple and fancy groceries. GJ Shuts Cash Grocery. You got coffee cans in the window, you got coffee signs, got all kinds of products in view. But again, you'll generally see the grocer in the view, you'll see the owner of the business, and maybe some friends or family. It's very common to see in these views. Back of this one here just says, I'm not sure what it says on the back there. It's AMBL, but we know for sure that's in Hannibal, New York. Over here, there's a colonial homestead in a town called Bridgewater, New York. It has rooms for tourists. You got the big old hotel out back. You got a little store right on the side of the road, uh, probably selling all kinds of stuff. You got a gas pump as usual. So just a neat early view there. You got early automobile. You got a tourist rooms and baths sign in view. I actually see two or three pumps in view there. I mean, once the automobiles really came in, into place, these roadside little gas stations popped up and every town had at least one. Uh, a lot of these cars couldn't go very far without filling up again. So these long tours or, or trips that these people took, they stayed at tin can tourist type camps or at these little roadside cabin type things. So these are very quaint little views. You can see the barn in the back with the little silo. This card in the back just says Bridgewater, New York. And our last view in the series here is the Auburn Diner, a beautiful roadside diner. This is really a train car diner, just converted into a diner uh, there. There's a sign in the back that says Barry Oil Company, Auburn Diner, boot service always open, and homemade pies on the top sign here. So this is one of my favorites as well from this group. It just says Auburn, New York. And again, diners are a very collectible category. You will find them on real photo cards. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't listed this card for sale, but I would venture to say it's in the 100 plus range, maybe higher. Um, I haven't seen a lot of this particular diner, so I have to do some more research. Um, but it is a really, really nice real photo postcard of a diner. So that's it for my actual cards. I will say a couple things if you're interested in collecting real photo postcards. And this is one of the good books that are out there, one of the nicer books. It's hard to read backwards, but it says real photo postcard pictures from a changing nation. This is chock full of real photo postcards on how our nation changed from the horses and wagons to the early automobiles and how people started to travel across the nation. And then basically the Bible of collecting real photo postcard is Bob Bogdan's book, Real Photo Postcard Guide, The People's Photography. Uh, this card book is readily available. 
Um, it is a must have if you're collecting real photo postcards. It talks about the history of postcards, what to look for, um, all different things, everything real photo postcards. Used um, to belong to our club years ago, Bob Bogdan. Yeah, great, great guide. I mean, this is one of the best. It goes all the way from private mailing real photo postcards up into the 50s and 60s. Um, he talks about some of the most popular types of real photos, like paper moon and props in the uh, studio cards. Paper moons right now are probably the hottest category on eBay for real photo postcards. Uh, real photo paper moons that used to sell last year for 25 to 50 are in the 200 to $300 range right now. Real photo paper moons are the cards you need to find. Look in every postcard box at every show. If you find them, you got a gold mine. Uh, there was a display of real photo paper moon postcards at a museum, and I think that's what triggered the popularity. Um, and they're just going crazy right now. Sports, baseball, basketball, hockey, real photo postcards, believe it or not. Any type of delivery vehicle or horse-drawn wagon that's identified. I always say small town uh, versus large town. Again, New York City's got some phenomenal real photo postcard scenes, but there were hundreds, if not thousands of those cards made versus some of the cards you saw tonight. Might have had as little as five to maybe 25 made. Anything suffrage we talked about, anything uh, suffrage or women's right to vote, anything temperance, anything prohibition. Uh, they also made panoramic size real photo postcards, very hard to find, but they are out there. And of course, real photo railroad stations, depots, trains of any type. And again, one of the new categories is coming out, postcards on postcards. If you Google that or you look at those on eBay, the prices are going very, very high on those type of cards. Uh, real photo postcards, another quick tip. They are usually sepia brown in color. They're not very attractive. For the longest time, nobody wanted real photo postcards. Uh, they were the stepchild of postcards. Everybody wanted bright and vibrant colors, artists touched up, glitter, uh, embellishments. Real photo postcards were overlooked for many, many, many years. They have now caught on and they're up there with Halloween postcards and, and artists signed and, and other great categories. Um, You'll see them in sepia brown. You'll see them in black and white. You will see them in blue, which is very unusual. It's called a cyanotype postcard. Um, again, if you want to tell if it's a real photo postcard or not, always take a loop or a magnifying glass to it, and that will show you whether it has dots or not, whether it was mass produced on a, on a printing press. So does anybody have questions? Yes. In one of your cards, the, the rail wreck, O and W Railroad, uh, at the beginning. That's the yep. Ontario and Western Railroad, and they were the largest hauler of milk and cheese in the world for many years, from Western New York down to New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went bankrupt in 1958. Um, wow. The other one, the other thing is Grenville is right on the border with Vermont. And the one one more thing, the 20th Century Limited was one of the greatest trains in the world for many years. It was the New York Central. Actually, it was considered the most luxurious train in the world. And it ran from New York to Chicago in th about 13 hours. Wow. It's amazing. And they did have crashes, obviously, too. So Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of train wrecks. You mean, in this collection alone, I bet you I have two or 300 train wrecks. Um, it's funny that you mentioned cheese because I have a lot of cheese factories in upstate New York. So yeah. that was a big deal there as well. Um, I they see, burned down a lot also. Yeah. I wow. see grapes and uh, wineries. I see those on real photo postcards. Um, it's neat to see the different topics, you know, within New York State versus things like where I'm from, the Jersey Shore. We see beachy scenes and, and the beach and the pine barrens and the woods and things like that. Each state has its own things that, uh, you know, they focused on. Being down here in Florida now, real photo postcards around 1905 in Florida were few and far between. Florida was just developing back then. You'll see larger hotels and things like that, but you won't see anywhere near the amount of railroads like you did in the Northeast and, and upstate New York. 
Can you tell Anybody us else? Your, your videos and uh, can you tell us how to access your videos and also how yeah, to find yeah, your cards that are sale? If you're, if you're interested in learning more, I am on YouTube. A simply postcard guy, all one word, postcard guy. Um, I have about 400 videos. I try to upload one or two a week. Um, and right now I'm at 957 subscribers. What a, a subscriber is, it means you went to my YouTube video and you clicked on that you liked it. That means you're a subscriber and you'll get notified of when my new videos come out. The goal is to get to a thousand videos. So I'm hoping if you're not a subscriber, you'll go to my page and please subscribe. Once you hit a thousand dollars, you become a YouTube YouTuber and you start to get what they call monetized. Now the big YouTubers can make a living of doing that. Me doing postcards. I'll be lucky if I get five bucks a month, but it's something. Uh, so if you can please go to postcard guy on YouTube and just click subscribe, you'll see all my videos on there. I did one the other night on hold to lights. I did one on early uh, Colombian uh, expos. Um, I have all different videos. Halloween, I did one on Halloween postcards. And what's really neat is I do what they call an unboxing. In the baseball card world, they do what they call un unpackaging or un unboxing. They open a pack of postcards live online and see if they can find a great card inside. I take the box that comes in the mail to me every month, zip it open, with a razor knife, open it up and take out the cards one by one and show you exactly as I see them coming out of the box. So it'll be neat because you'll see, I don't know, maybe 30, 40, 50 printed New York State cards. And then you'll see 200 real photos. Then you'll see 15 Halloweens. Then you'll see another 300 real photos. There's no rhyme or reason to the cards. He was a collector of upstate New York, Halloween, Hold the Lights, um, a lot of great, great cards. Um, so that's how you can find me on YouTube. On eBay, I'm known as Postcard Guy Antiques. So if you want to see what these cards sell for, you can always go into my auctions and see what they sold for. Um, I would say over the last two years, I sell maybe, and I'm a small time seller on eBay. I sell maybe 50 cards a week, but the average price is between 30 and 200 a card. So I sell a little bit higher end card than what a lot of people do. Um, I haven't touched any of the three or 4,000 printed New York State cards. So once I get through some of these real photos, I'll start listing and start showing some of the printed cards, which in my opinion are just as great as the real photos, but I just like the real photos a little bit better. Um, and if you want to email me, I'm simply postcardguy at AOL.com. So very, very easy to find me. Uh, again, I'm a member of the Jersey Shore Club in New Jersey, moved down here to Florida. Now I'm a member of the Tampa, Florida Sunshine Club down here. I'm um, doing a show in Tampa in two weeks. Can't wait. We have two or three shows down here, usually a Mary Martin show and a couple others down here. Um, and it's just a neat, neat area. I'm finding a lot of postcards down here in Florida. I think a lot of people retire with them down here and they turn up down here. Um, I always said the best antiques come from the Northeast because that's where the money was during the time. But I find now finding antiques and finding them at a good price, I'm finding them down here in Florida because a lot of people move south to retire and that's where their collections come down here with them. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. That was great. Nice cards. Thanks.